I Have This Old Gun is presented by the official rare coin and bullion dealer of the National Rifle Association, Universal Coin and Bullion. Papa Shaw submachine gun was developed in response to a need for submachine guns that had arisen of the 1939-1940 Winter War with Finland. Uh, they found they needed submachine guns, but the submachine guns that they had at that time were developed by Degturyev, turned out to be very costly and complicated. Degturev was a designer of the old school. His idea of gun manufacture was to start with big blocks of steel and cut away anything that didn't look like a gun part. Spagen, on the other hand, a young man, was a, was a visionary among Soviet gun designers. Uh, he was always thinking about trying uh, to make the gun easier to produce, use less material, uh, less machine time, less skilled labor, uh, all of which uh, were scarce, especially in time of war. He had been studying and thinking a lot about sheet metal technology. Now this weapon goes into production in late 1941, is produced throughout the end of the Second World War and could not be more simple. It could not be more rugged. It could not be a better example of how to make a simple, effective, and rugged design. What makes it so simple, effective, and rugged is the fact that it fires from the open bolt, so it has very, very few moving parts. Really, you have a barrel with barrel jacket assembly, you have a butt stock made of wood with the receiver, and you have a bolt with the bolt spring, and that's about it. When you think of the Soviet Army in the Second World War, you picture them going to war with weapons of devastating firepower. You picture them going to war with weapons like the PPSH-41 submachine gun. In fact, it becomes the great icon of Soviet soldiers fighting the great patriotic war. The submachine gun was very simply manufactured. It had a ventilated shroud over the barrel it fired from an open bolt, could be fired either semi-automatically or as it usually was in full automatic mode. During the manufacture of the Pepe Shaw 41, the one area that they really paid attention to was the bore, and that was chrome lined, and that was chrome lined so that it could withstand corrosion from not being cleaned as often as uh, uh, a regular rifle bore. The drum magazine was very reliable. Uh, the gun had a very high cyclic rate, which meant that with 71 rounds, uh, the Russian soldier could use the gun almost like a hose. The Russians probably changed their infantry uh, tactics uh, to suit the gun because they didn't have enough rifles. Uh, the valuable part of Russia was occupied by the Germans. The Russians had hurriedly moved uh, their factories and everything east of the Urals. Uh, they were very hard pressed. They didn't have enough machine tools. They didn't have enough, enough uh, raw materials. They didn't, uh, skilled labor was, was very scarce and highly competed for among various uh, uh, wartime industries. So the Russians had to make do with a submachine gun. Fortunately, they picked an extremely good one. One of the things that made the PPSH-41 work so well was its cartridge. Uh, it was a little underpowered, perhaps, uh, but the 762 by 25 millimeter cartridge uh, developed for the TT-33 pistol, uh, the Tokarev pistol, uh, worked really well. Uh, it was a bottleneck cartridge, 
and that made uh, the, the feed ramp surface not as critical because with a bottleneck pistol cartridge, it, because of, of its geometry, it wants to go into the chamber. The weapon was used throughout World War II, even though in the mid-war uh, they came out with even a simpler design, the PPS-43. Uh, and by the end of the war, about six million of these submachine guns had been produced. Now, after the war, the North Koreans adopted the exact same, almost the exact same gun as the Type 49, and the Chinese adopted it as the Type 50. Now, these were often encountered in Korea, and they're considered to be really by many of the Allied um, and UN troops, American troops, to be one of the best submachine guns in use in Korea. Spagen packed a lot of things into a very simple design. He was true to his word. He kept it extraordinarily simple. There are practically no screw-threaded uh, fittings in the PPSH. Everything goes together mechanically. I have this old gun brought to you by Universal Coin and Bullion, the official rare coin and bullion dealer of the National Rifle Association. Visit us online for other I Have This Old Gun videos at AmericanRifleman.org.